mountain on stage it's the sergeant for freedom jacob caesar let's welcome god bless you Thank you. Thank you. You're far too kind. Thank you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Wow. Standing ovation. Thank you very much. Now, first of all, I would like to say a big thank you, Pastor Brian, for this initiative. He who that cares for the youth will see the end of the future. And I want to thank you for this. It's a great initiative. And also thank all the team that is supporting him. But most of all, I want to thank the youth that is here that made this happen. Your presence is very much appreciated. Um, when Jackie called me and um, I mentioned IES, I didn't know much about it, but I decided to find out, and that's when I found out about your president and realized that he's doing great things, and anything great, trust me to be part of. I'm destined for greatness. So once again, I want to say thank you very much. God bless you for what you're doing. God bless you, Jackie. God bless you, all the people here supporting this initiative. But before I start, I'm not here today to maybe talk about really the things I've done or the things I've achieved. I think you've seen enough already. I'm here to share the seven core principles of freedom, Jacob Caesar, with you. Now, this is not just going to make you extraordinary. This is not just going to make you a millionaire. This is going to make you wealthy. There's a big difference. There's a very big difference between being somebody, being rich, being a star, being a footballer, Somebody can be that, but when you're wealthy, it means you're ordained, you are anointed, you are appointed. Nobody can stop you. Your steps are heavy. Your footsteps are landmarks and footprints in society. And that's the person, that is the spirit, that is the character that I want to encourage the youth of Africa to become. It's been a very long journey coming here, but this long journey only seems like it was yesterday. It's come so fast. And so I was born by the name Nana Kwame Bediaku, and sometime in my life, I decided to change my name to Cheddar. Cheddar simply means money. Why did I choose to call myself Cheddar? That's the only thing I lacked when I was born. I was born into poverty. I wasn't even the ordinary man. I was poor, very poor. There was nothing ordinary about me. So money was the first thing that I thought if I find it, I could solve my problems. 
But you will find out later in my speech that no, it wasn't just money. I thought it was money. So I started with money. I wanted it so bad. I was looking for it. If you had a mother like my mother that was a vegetarian, so she never fed me with no chicken. I never had no beef. Plus the money was so little. There was no television in the house. There was no radio, but I had to play it cool. I had to hide the feeling of poverty. I realized it was a curse. Poverty is a curse, but you can turn a curse to a gift. That was my first core principle of FJC. My number one core principle is know thyself. I want everybody here to understand that if you don't know yourself, you definitely don't know where you're going. Because people are going to be telling you who you are. People are going to be telling you what you're going to become. And you're going to be disappointed with yourself. So I'm going, to leave, I'm going to leave you with these core principles. I want you to understand that your first thing that you need to know is to know thyself. I knew myself. I knew I was broke. I knew I was poor. I knew I was black. I knew I was an African. For the people who are following them, the little ants, they follow them. Now, I am going to use this ant as a white man. And I'm going to use the sugar as a black man. So you will know thyself. When the white man sees gold or diamonds from far, he doesn't come alone. He comes with his people and he's following and he will come and he will take the gold. He saw it from far. The white man is playing the ant rule. So they say a black man is a bad man. But the black man is the sugar. Meaning that there's something sweetness. The sweetness in the black man. The sweetness in you. There is something in you that they are chasing you. They are coming for you. Somebody is coming for you because you are the gold. You didn't know that you are the gold. This is why I want you to know thyself. Because you are the gold. You are the reason why the ant has come with his army and took the sugar and built mountains. You are the reason why the white man has come with his army, took your gold, and built skyscrapers. So, if the ant or the white man has done so much out of you, I want you to start to ask yourself the question, who am I? That's it. You are the gold. That's your value. That's your value. I came here to instill this principled core values into you. I want to remind you of who you are. I want you to be aware of who you are becoming. The youth, of course, have a future ahead of them. And your future is the time ahead of you. This brings me to FJC's principle number three. Time. Time. You guys are never appreciating the time. This time I'm standing here with you, I could charge you three million dollars. Because if I tell you what I'm worth in an hour, you wouldn't believe it. I didn't wait for anybody to put that wealth on me. I said I am worth this much in an hour. That is the value of my time. This is the same kid that started as a penniless, broke child. When I found out about myself, and when I started to appreciate creation, I put the value on myself. And I realized that my time here is all I have.
That's all I have. You can't tell me nothing about it. I am going to grow old. I am going to die one day. And you will do the same. But before we both die, what are we doing with our time? I want you to see the importance of your time. Okay? Time is not a joke. If you wanted to be a footballer when you were 15 years old and you're 27 years today, you haven't become a footballer, my brother, forget it. Start thinking about being a coach. The football time, gone. This is time. And I'm going to share my story with time with you guys. Okay? This is in my book. The seven stages of time that came out of the seven principles of Freedom Jacob Caesar. Stage number one. Life consists of these seven decades. Seven stages and seven phases. You're going to be changing. And every decade is going to go so quick. But you only have seven of them. And so... I would like to calculate these seven decades with all of you so you will be prepared for your life. Let's see how we're going to break these seven decades up. It's 70 years. Okay? Your first five years, you know nothing. You're crawling. You don't know anything. Your last five years, now you know everything, you've seen everything, but you can't do anything. That's one decade, it's gone. You have six left, okay? Two of this, two out of these six decades, you're going to sleep it away. <laughs> Every night, you're going to sleep between five to eight hours. So two to three decades can go. But let me be conservative and say two decades. So now you have four decades. This is the four decades that you want to build houses with. You want to get married with. You want to have children with. You want to become a footballer with. You want to become a jackapier with. You want to do everything with these 40 years. Huh. Now my question is, if you're lucky, you will see the 70. If you're not, you might only have 20 years or 30 years to achieve what you came here to do. If you want to change someone's life, if you want to change a society, you want to build a nation again, you want to build your mom a house, build yourself a house, buy yourself a car, buy your dream clothes, buy your dream whatever, huh. you have up to four decades. Even if you were working and getting $100,000 a month, start to think that can you get all these things out of these four decades. Your time is the most precious, the most precious tool in life. And it's the third principle. But it is the most precious. It's going to run out. And this is how it runs out. By the time you're 10 years, head into 20 years, everything is beautiful. You don't have to pay for your rent. You don't have to pay for your fees. You don't have to pay for anything. So life is beautiful. Life says, good morning. It's always beautiful when you don't have to pay for anything. By the time you hit your 20s and get into 25, you start to think about your old days when you had everything. You had energy, you had time, you had fun, you had everything, but you were broke. Now that from 20 to 35, you have begun to work for yourself. You have everything. You have your car, you probably have a wife, you're successful. But you don't have time anymore. You're running out of time. Everybody wants a part of you. So you've lost time. And that's the time that life comes to you and say, hello, good afternoon. You're halfway through your seven decades. So life has come to greet you. And then it begins all at 40. 
when you have your wife, when you have your kids, when you have a life and you want to relax, you're a secretary, you're going to stay as a secretary for the rest of your life. Okay? If you are, unless you're KFC, it'd probably be a miracle. But whatever you are, by the time you hit 40, you would like to maintain it. Don't start dreaming. It's too late to dream. Maybe you should go for a vision. But don't dream. Now, get into your 40s to your 50s. Now, you've realized that you've done whatever you had to do in life. Your kids are growing. You've rented yourself a home or you've built your mom a home. You know, you're beginning to see that there is the youth behind you. And you can't do what the youth do anymore. So you're 10 years away from retirement. Now you want to retire at the age of 60. You have money. You have lived life. You have everything. And now you want time to rest. You have the time, although it's not enough. But there's one thing missing. Your health begins to go backwards. Your health is telling you you need more rest. And at this point, life comes back and says to you, good evening. You only have 10 years more to reach your seven decades. And if you reach this seven decades, any years after that, it's God's giving bonus. But life has already said to you, good night. It's over. From there going, anything can happen. So I decided to share this speech with the youth today because I want you to see what is ahead of you with your time. If you can see what your time is going to do for you, if you are 18 today, if you are 20 today, if you are 15 today, if you are 25, if you are 30 today, you've got four decades. You can pull the brakes now if you think you're not doing the right thing. You've got time. You've got time to impact this world, to impact society, to impact your family, to make a change. So when you die, I'm sure God will be there and he will salute you and say, my son or my daughter, what do you want to be next? You are a great achiever. I'm going to send you back. It's your value of your time. You should never play with it. You should not let anybody confuse you with it. Your time belongs to you. Everybody has this time. That is the unique, peculiar gift God gave us after creation. Time. Please, if you forget time, forget freedom. If you forget freedom, forget cheddar. And if you forget cheddar, forget money. I want you to keep this core principles with you because that's what I'm leaving with you. It's a capital. I don't go around speaking and giving speeches. I simply know how to acquire my wealth. So I don't have to try and speak to everybody to impress them about my wisdom or my knowledge because I know how to get paid. But I'm doing this for free because I want you to know that freedom is standing right here with you. And that's the value I'm going to give you. Now let's go to principle four. See, people might not take this very serious. But it's relationship management. The relation it's okay, I always say to people, but the ship can be a problem. The relationship that you have with people on this earth, that is basically how you're building your empire. You're building your empire by the relationships that you're having with people. Is that you, Sandra? 
sorry, you are building your empire with the relationships that you have made on this planet. So, my relationship with Pastor Brian today, it means that Pastor Brian can open the door for me to impact a thousand or a ten thousand kids. That ten thousand kids can impact another twenty thousand people. That twenty thousand people can impact another million people, and it can keep going and going and going. So I value that relationship. I have to manage it. I have to hold it. I can't throw it away. So if Pastor Brian is one of the people on my right hand, let's see who is on my left hand that I have to manage this relationship. This could be your mother. See. My relationship with my mother is for me to understand that if somebody can carry me, a knucklehead person like me, a tough warrior like me for nine months and take care of me for all that time and I have something to pay her back, I need to do whatever I have to do to manage this relationship and manage Pastor Brian's relationship and manage the relationship with the other friend who is blind and manage the relationship with my friend who is playing the drums and manage all the relationships around me. I learned this from the story of Christ. He managed 12 people around him. Some of them were cool. Some of them were fishermen. But some of them were betrayals. There were different types of people, but he managed all of them around him. If you want to be successful, if you want to become wealthy, if you want to become a leader, you cannot be a leader without you managing these relationships. Because a leader is not chosen based on relationships. A leader is chosen because one has valued the relationships amongst society. He goes to them. They don't come to him. They only chose him. That's why he's the leader. But the leader went to them. He's the one that manages the relationship. It's not the people who believe in the leader that is managing the relationship. It's the leader who has managed the relationship. So I would like you guys to understand that Whatever relationships that you have, manage it. I don't know if, if it's your girlfriend relationship and you had to break up with them. It doesn't mean that the fact that you're breaking up with them means you have to break away from them. You have to manage the relationship. Because you never know. She could be standing at heaven gates. <laughs> yes, she could be the last one waiting for you. You have to manage it. Because if you don't, and you saw her at the gate, you know where you're going, right? Uh, so that's the value of managing relationships. It's basically the foundation of wealth, success. Managing relationship is key. I have different types of friends. One of my friends is blind, completely blind. And he's one of my best friends. And I don't want to go into that story today, but I managed the relationship for four years until I found out that Brown is an angel who came to this earth to deliver a message. And it took me four years for me to understand the message that is coming from a blind person. His words to me was, Cheddar, you are one of the greatest. And his eyes was closed. And I said, yeah, okay, why? And then he says to me, the greatest tragedy that befell on a man is a man with a sight but without a vision. And you have a lot of that. I still didn't understand Brown. Oh, you can clap if you want to, but I want to tell you my story. I didn't understand Brown. I thought he just quoted something for me. But I kept thinking about it over and over and over and over. Then it dawned on me and said, the greatest tragedy that befalls on a man is a man with a sight, but without a vision. Then I realized it was a blind person that told me. 
So how did this blind person know about a sight and a vision? That's how the angel speaks. So from that very moment, Brown made me know the greatness in me. It didn't take CNN or BBC to come and tell me that you are great. No, it took a blind person. That relationship that I managed, he told me I'm great. It took me four years. I had to rent him a house. I had to buy him a fridge. I had to buy him a microwave. I had to make sure he's fine. And after I got him everything, I asked him, is there anything else I can get? He said, yes. What is it? TV. <laughs> yes. He believed that he can see. So I asked him, how are you going to watch TV, Brown? He said, don't worry. I'll follow it. My message to you is don't be bothered with what you're looking at. Really, watch where you're stepping. Because that's the only thing you need to follow. Don't just let your eyes be the sight that decides for you. Because you don't live by watching. You live by walking. You live by walking. And I repeat it. Is somebody in the house hearing me now? I said you live by walking. You don't live by watching. So all of those who have been watching me and judging me, I am here today. I am delivering the message to you yourself that don't just watch me. Watch my step. Follow my journey. Understand the value of where I'm traveling to because I am walking towards a destiny. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're looking at. I don't know what you're saying. But you show me where you're going and I will roll with you. Anyone here that shows me where they're going, I will roll with you. I need to know where you're going. I know where I'm going. I know myself. I know my principles. I know my core values. And you know what? I appreciate me. If you don't like me, it's okay. But I appreciate me. I want you to start to appreciate yourself. You don't need anybody to make you. I want this spirit to enter you this very moment. You don't need anybody. The only reason why CNN is talking about you is because there's something great in you. Don't let them lie to you. The only reason why you're on Ghana television it's because they've seen something great about you. The only reason why you're mentioning the name freedom is because I am representing something. Something that has got your eyes looking. Something that has got your mouth speaking. Something that has got your legs walking. Now you want to follow. You have to watch your step. Because all the time that I told you about, you're going to be walking through a journey. And keep your eyes there. Watch your step. Don't waste your time. Don't talk about people. You know, the only reason why they talk behind my back is because they're behind me. That's why I've never looked. I don't look. I am just going. And the pace that I'm going with, no one can stop me. Because I'm used to my own steps. Even when I slip, I know how to get back up. Even when I fall, I know how to pick myself up. Even when you stop me, I know how to put my way through. I would duck. I would die. I would use my 70 years so powerful that it will impact generations and nations. I will impact the youth. I want to change not only my country, but I want to change my color. And I'm not saying that I want to become Michael Jackson. No, I want to stay black. But I want the world to understand that black mentality can also be full of wisdom. It can also be full of achievement. It can also be full of great things. Most of these things that I've done that look so big for some people I did it in one decade. Now, I don't know 
what to say and how God is going to elevate me in my next decade. But we're definitely taking steps together. I'm not alone. I don't stand alone. There is a great spirit. That spirit that is in you is in me. The only difference is you don't see it, but I see it. I am not alone. I want you to find that spirit in you and let it work for you. It can't be the pastor that put it in you. It's not going to be the teacher that put it in you. It's not just going to be somebody that will put that in you. You need to discover that yourself. And if you follow this principle, core principles, you are going to discover yourself. Please make sure before you die, you discover yourself. Even at your last year, when you discover yourself, remember me. Remember me that I told you to know thyself. Let me take you to my seat. Do I have time? I have two more principles and then maybe we can get some questions. But my seat one is oh is it five? Oh my gosh. So you guys are really following the steps, not just the talk. Okay. All right. So my fifth principle is going to be money. Dollars, dollars, chachaquacha, CDs, Nara. Now, I just want to teach you about money. I'm not going to teach you how to become rich. I'm going to teach you what money is. And you decide for yourself what you want out of it. Money, I told you from the beginning that I was broke, penniless broke. Hey, I had to look for this girl. But money is also the invincible devil. And this devil is also created by the omnipotent creator. Hmm. What a controversy. So maybe God is a mathematician. Great thing to, for you to find out. Money is the biggest thing that is moving the world and shaping it left, right, center. It's tricking us, it's playing us, it's killing us, it's stopping us. It's doing all sort of things to us. But nobody wants to take their time and look at this girl, money. Everybody is just chasing it. Wow. But I have something to share for you with money. It's a very, 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 very powerful being. Money has human in it. Money has a spirit in it. Money is powerful. God created it, but it's very powerful. And today I want to share that with you. Because the president is looking for it. The bishop is looking for it. The prostitute is looking for it. The working person is looking for it. Everybody is looking for it. So, who is this money? And I know you are all looking for it too. But I, I just want to hear, well, is there anybody here not looking for it? Everyone is looking for it. Well, let me break it down for you. M, money. M says, many would die for me. O says, over me, many would die. N says, never will you and I say no to I. Please follow this code and see how powerful money is. And then E is telling you that eternal is my life. Every one of us came to meet it. Every one of us left it. From King Solomon to David to Kwame Nkrumah and Freedom and Cheddar, one day is going to leave it. But money is still here. Please, don't you want to get the minute for yourself and ask money some questions and stop chasing money at least take a minute take a day and try and find why money why did god even create it in the first place you would understand the value of life if you ask these questions because i repeat it again 
those who know the value of life will find out what the money is worth. I'm going to repeat it again. For those who know the value of life would understand what the money is worth. That's the only thing that controls us. Okay? I don't know which one that we're worshipping, but if they put you in a church for eight hours, you're going to get up and go out and say, this pastor is preaching for too long. You will go out. But you wake up from Monday to Saturday, and you work over 40 hours just to get paid. So I want to know, who do you think people are worshipping? Because are they pretending that they're worshipping God or they're worshipping money? I want to know. Because I want to know, if you, if you want this money, you need to understand this consequences of life and money. Because that's my fifth principle. And guess what? Money used to be my girlfriend, but now she's not. She's something else for me that I can't tell you about because I elevated. I went from money and I elevated to another step what money couldn't buy. Freedom. And that's my sixth principle. Your freedom. You need this more than anything. See, a lot of people think when they get the money, everything will be okay. Lie. Get it and see. There's more, there will be more problems after the money than you ever expected. But freedom becomes the core principle, the sixth principle that you need to make it to the seventh. If you make it to the seventh, you're truly God's son. The seventh day is the Sabbath day, and that's the code. Don't lose the seven principles. Don't lose the seven decades. Don't lose the seven faces. And don't lose the seven stages. Because even the Bible warned you that the creator is number seven. That's when he took his time out. So you need to follow the code. Now, freedom. People underestimate what freedom is. Because when you have freedom, you can't see the value. When you lose freedom, you will pay anything for freedom. Because you have it, you don't know. It's like the air you breathe. It's freedom. When you have the air that you're breathing, you don't pay for it. So you don't know. You don't value it. When you start running out of this breath now, you will pay anything to get this breath back. When you lose your chance of having this opportunity of speaking, the freedom of being who you are, if somebody took it away from you and you had one billion in the bank and they told you, give me that money and let me give you your freedom back, you will give it. So freedom, it's more expensive than money. It's very much needed. This takes us to Africa. You think you have your freedom? No. If you had your freedom, I won't be here today. You just had your independence. You haven't gotten your freedom yet. You need your freedom. Your freedom of thought. Your freedom of wealth. Your freedom of riches. Your freedom of happiness. You don't have it. I am here to share that with you. To let you know how important this freedom is. I'm not here to tell you about the houses I built all the cars I bought, all the watches I got. In fact, if I tell you about that, you're going to become my enemy. So I don't want to. I will share this cause with you. I want to share these principles with you. That freedom is the biggest thing for the black, the black nation worldwide. This is what we need. This is what we need to restore our value back. We need that freedom of thought and freedom of wealth, being able to create our own, being able to build our children from scratch as business people and not workers, as industrialists and economists, self-made presidents and not a democratic president. I'm sorry, but I mean, this might just choke a lot of people all over Africa, but I just think that if we are going to be presidents, 
we have to be president by our own, from our own, not from someone else's constituency. One day, I pray that God changes this narrative for black people all over Africa and all over the world. It's part of the freedom movement that I would like to change. But then back to the freedom. I am saying that if you understand the value of this freedom, and I'm going to explain it, most people think that when you become successful, you can be happy. No. Being successful doesn't necessarily bring happiness. Maybe you should find the happiness first, and it can lead you to success. This is freedom. When you know what you're capable of, what you know, when you know what you can contribute to society, the impact that you can bring to generations, you already have a value. You're free in the spirit, and you can do whatever you want to do, even though they want to question you. You have no answers for them. God's grace cannot be questioned, period. And that's freedom. It's an eternal freedom. It's eternal. Nobody should take this. When you have this, anyone that have this from now onwards, it's either richer than freedom or as rich as me. Because you think my wealth is those things? No. No, it's not those buildings. I told you I did all that in one decade. It's not... It's materials, it's buildings, it's cars. It's, I'm not going to be buried with this. I'm not going to take this value with me. I will leave it behind. But one thing that I'm going to leave with you, that you will remember me for a legacy, is these principles I've shared with you today. It's my investment to you. It's very important that I could have given you money, you will spend it. I can give you a ride, but tomorrow you jump on a Trotsky. I could do anything, and it won't last with you for even a couple of days. But these words will probably even stay with you and your spirit when you're in heaven. I am with you. I am with you. This is my value for you as a black man. I stand for you. I live for you. I stand by you. I know you're wrong. I know you're good. I know you're bad too. I know you betrayed me. I know you said some good things about me. But regardless what it is, I am what you are. And you are what I am. And I know thyself through you. So I value you. I stand for you. Am I on the seventh one? Whoa. So now I get a chance to go when I can share this seventh one. But this seventh one is what all the six, the six came from. My seventh core principle is wisdom. And I got a lot of it. You know, I'm very, very rich in God's kingdom. I am heavily rich. I am goddamn wealthy because of wisdom. I can stand, I can stand with the only time I have pride is when I stand under the shelter of the mightiness. I can say it, that I am wealthy. My wealth is endless. Because even when I die and go, you will see that this moment I shared with you has been shared with other millions of kids. And there is an impact that is transcending, that is traveling. I came as a walking memorial. I changed the grounds. I changed the landmark. I changed your streets. I changed your roads. I changed your lifestyle. I made you more hungry. I stopped you from getting angry. I made you jealous, but I woke you up. All because of what? Wisdom. You got it. You have to get this one. You are not a complete man if you don't have it. You are not a complete woman if you don't have it. Wisdom is the freshest seed that germinates in us. Nobody knows who we can become until our wisdom prevails. That's when we stand on stages. That's when we look so tall. 
but in real life, we're so small. That's when our pockets look so deep, but you can count my money. Wisdom, it's a powerful thing. And how did I acquire wisdom? See, if I don't share some of this with you, you're not going to get it. And I thought I had to figure out what wisdom is. It, it was the most challenging thing. As much as I was asking God about money, and, and I found out so much about money that I shared with you today, wisdom was very fascinating. I, I asked myself, who do I choose? Ruby or wisdom? Diamonds or wisdom? I said, no, let me go for wisdom. And so my mentor that I grew up and still my mentor was King Solomon. I love this guy. This guy used to cook for 2,000 people every night. His concubines were 700 and something. Listen, this is not being a player. He was something else. He fed 2,000 people. He killed 80 goats every night. His money in the sack, the coin, today they call it Bitcoin. King Solomon had big coins. It was in sacks following him. This guy was rich. He was wealthy. But you might think that I followed King Solomon because he was rich, because uh, he fed 2,000 people a night, or because he had 775 women. No. No. I liked all that. But there was one thing that I really wanted to find out about King Solomon. And that was what took away everything that he had. I like you people to think like this. Don't worry about the problem. Don't talk about it. Go to the cause of it. How did the problem come up? And learn from it. I wanted to learn from King Solomon because I didn't want to lose how I am going to become the next King Solomon. And I'm not lying to you. I am going to become the next King Solomon. It's just that this time, I'm not losing it. When I found out that King Solomon lost his wealth over breaking the principle. In the Bible, they call it the commandment, the covenant. He broke it. He lost everything. He lost everything. I cannot afford to lose everything. So my wisdom that I got from King Solomon is because I learned about the greatest mistake by one of the greatest kings. And I corrected myself with the greatest person's mistake. You need to learn that. Don't talk about Puff Daddy. Don't talk about Nana Dukufor. Don't talk about them, what they're doing wrong. Learn from what you think they're doing wrong. And you grow. You will acquire wisdom. You will acquire the greatest things on this earth that mankind couldn't acquire because you've gained wisdom. You've gained wisdom from experience. You've gained wisdom from the things you came to meet on this earth. The sea, the money, the gold, the oil, the animals, the ants. You gain wisdom from all of these things I have shared with you. I want to tell you something. When one man decides to change a nation, it's difficult. But when the heart of a man change, then this heart of man can change the heart of a nation. And so, what I'm leaving with you, with all these principles, that don't make yourself become that one man, I am man. Be a part of the man that contributed to the revolution, the redemptive, the reformative change of this planet, of this universe, of this country, of this nation. And your name will go in the books of the living and the existing. Thank you very much. I go by the name Freedom Jacob Caesar. And thank you very much. Thank you. All right.
Please, I think he needs a stand innovation. Thank you so much. All right, please take your seat. We are going to take three questions right now. So let me know where you are and then I'll locate you for your questions. Oh, you again? Let's take those who have not asked any questions, right? Okay, wait. If you have any questions, please can come we, forward. Can we do five? Five questions? Five? Okay, that's right. Okay, okay, five. Who else? One, two, three. Ladies, come There's on. a lady here, so we'll pick the lady over the, the guys. All right. Yeah. Please stand. Come. Come, come here. You come. And you. No, you're supposed to come forward. So if you want to ask a question, you come forward. So we'll take it from here. Okay, sir. Thank you for your submission. You're welcome. My question is um, with regards to whatever you shared with us and the kind of wisdom, with regards to wisdom. I know that through your knowledge acquisition, through the process of acquiring the wisdom, there are two ways or there are certain times that you face certain challenges as acquiring the wisdom. So what is that specific thing that you say you can, I mean, how do, you, how do I Point put at, it? right? Specific challenge. Exactly. Good. Thank you. <laughs> um, there isn't a specific challenge that will make you acquire wisdom. There are challenges in life. Those challenges, you're going to have to overcome those challenges. You have to win every challenge that you face. There were billions of people already before you. They faced the challenges. Some of them couldn't bear the challenge. They fell. Some of them overcame the challenge. They rise. So I would like to tell you that you can't base wisdom on a specific challenge that will bring it for you. It's based on experience. It's based on understanding. It's based on you attributing and contributing the knowledge that you have acquired from both academic, natural resources, and living in different communities and everywhere. This is the chance God has given you. You are experimenting the universe. You would be a fool if you couldn't acquire anything from this whole, should I call it, uh, 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 lack of a better word, maybe I should call it life excursion. You're lucky to be here. Now you, you're traveling to, to Koforidia, to England, to this. You've seen mountains, you've seen sea, you've seen one man running with two legs, you've seen blind guy become so rich, you've seen somebody, you got to learn from it. So it's not a challenge. You see, and I told you that my wisdom that I acquired, I learned so much from the mistakes of the greatest king. Their mistakes. So that's what those were their challenges, and I learned from it. I hope you are, your question is answered. Go and be successful. Who is next? Me, please. Uh, thank you, Freedom. Uh, I want to ask where the industry that you found yourself, the real estate industry, is one of the industries with most difficulties. I spoke to many experts from them, and anytime they share with you, they tell you it is a 50 50 thing. So I want to know how you survive in such an industry and become overwhelmingly successful in it. Okay, thank you for your question. Um, for me, it's also not about the industry being difficult. Okay, you, you have to understand that difficult people live difficult lives. Simple people live simple lives. Rich minds get money. Foolish people end up with foolish people. Smart people end up with smart people. Bad girls end up with bad girls. It's the industry you choose. Are you ready for it? Then you have to take it to the top. Jackie did it. She went in the movie industry and blasted her face all over Africa. She was ready. You have to be ready. If you're not ready, any industry will swallow you. It's not property, it's not music, it's not football. Any industry will swallow you if you're not ready. Life is only looking for people who are ready to leave it and to make a change. So you have to have that spirit that you want to make a change. And when you go, you change the industry. That's what I did with real estate. It's never my business. 
I accidentally got into it. I rented a building for a nightclub. I got the money from the nightclub and I bought the building with the receipts that I got from the nightclub. And when I sold the building, I got the same profit I got from the nightclub, I got it from the building. But one of the money was more intact. You know, the other one was scattered. So I said, okay, I don't want to be scatter, scatter. I just want to be. And so when I entered the industry, I asked myself, who is the giant here? Who is the giant here? I cleared everybody and I put my face there because that was my mission that I'm going to impact the industry. I'm going to impact society with the industry. You need that spirit. What's the next question? Go, go be successful, young man. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm not here to ask a question, but to make a request on behalf of the youth of Ghana. Please, are you with me? So we want you. We see you as a force of change in Africa. You've given us hope. We want you to make an open declaration that from hence, you are going to partner with IS because Pastor Brian started this seven years ago and he has touched so many lives and we want you to be on board to partner to make the dream come true. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, I, I, I've already said that to Pastor that this relationship will be managed forever. And that's how I see my uh, relationship. So even when you don't see me here, I might not be able to get on the Zoom like the vice president, but I'll send my hologram. I will be here. If I can't make it here, there's going to be one of you who I'm going to be their mentor and probably will speak more knowledge and more wisdom than me. Because from now onwards, know thyself like I know thyself, and we are one. We are one. I stand for you people. I stand for your nation. I stand for what you do. It's greatness. And I have this opportunity to share what is wisdom, what is knowledge with you, what is my past, and the reason why you're seeing all these buildings is not because I had money. It's because of wisdom and these core principles. This belief that there is a mightiness, that there is a creation that have made me to create on onwards and add value to society i have a mission i have a vision you know i am here for a reason i have a purpose and you are part of the reason why i feel like i truly have a purpose and so i'm grateful and you have that declaration thank you thank you very much thank you thank you for this opportunity to ask my question I hear you you can put the mask down if you want thank you sir for this opportunity to ask my question please um, if you don't know yourself, how can you find yourself? Is it advisable to ask people how, what they think of you? Uh, uh, okay. Now, clap for, clap for her. And, and, and for me, Thank you. for me, by far, this is also one of the best questions I've had back from the speech that I've had in this world when someone becomes so vulnerable that they don't even know how to explain what they think they know. That is like surrender. You know, for me, when people surrender, I see courage. I see courage. It, you know, it takes so much to give up and say that, you know, how can I be known? How, what am I going to do? You know, this is the kind of question you should be asking God, you know, but you're asking me and I'm happy to be sharing this with you. Uh, what's your name? Marilyn. Um, I think that from your question, I can see that your background, how you grew up, you know, you had a very reserved people who didn't really care about certain things but they were living so maybe the purpose of you being here my speech has questioned you that now you want to find yourself and i'm going to tell you three things to do to find yourself first you need to appreciate yourself you're here with us that's the first thing you need to do that you're here you're human you have a purpose you have two hands you have two legs you have eyes you can see you can do something you need to appreciate yourself and don't look in the mirror too much with weave on. 
okay trying to find yourself but look at yourself through the person in front of you that is this person who I want to be like if it's no take a step back and look again at this the people I want to surround myself with if the answer is no take a step back again now this could be your mother this could be your father this could be your best friend this could be your girlfriend if you can really tell that value of that person in front of you is not where you want to go don't fool yourself walk away because you probably will be the one that will go and come back and save them but if you stand there with them you will drown with them so you should know thyself and that's just that decision you take take practical positive constructive decisions let the decisions control your step because I already told you you all need steps you don't need sights you don't need to be watching you don't need to be judging you don't need to be justifying you need to move if you're standing it's very dangerous anything can come and hit you anything can come and sweep you move and see where you're moving to and follow your destiny and before you reach the end of your destiny you will know thyself because there's a light at the end of the tunnel thank you very much thank you well thank you i am kobe solomon kabari I, I would like to ask uh, what are some books that you can recommend right now to back these seven uh, core uh, principles and then also i watched an interview with you and bolare and you made a profound statement saying that you pay 10 percent of tithe of every income that you made so I would, I would like to ask if this titan can be one of your principles and then my third question sorry <laughs> please two, two is fine i will forget the third one please two it's okay <laughs> So let me, I will start, I will start answering you from the second question, okay? Um, tight is not my principle. Tight is my responsibility. Okay? I have a covenant with God, and I said, when I make this wealth, the first fruits of the wealth will be attributed and contributed to society. I don't care what the pastor does with the money. I don't care what the children's home do with the money. What I care about is whatever I promise God between me and that spirit is done. And you cannot stop me from getting my returns. Okay? So that's, that's from the, 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 the second question. It should be your responsibility. The first one, you were saying something about Bolare, something, something, but I forgot. I'm sorry. Ah, the books. Books, yeah. Yes, yes, please. Just start with the Bible. It's a great, it's a, it's a great storyteller. Okay? It's a great storyteller. I learned so much stories in the Bible. The story of Adam and Eve is the most controversial, uh, 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 what should I say, I don't know the words to even choose for it anymore. Like, really, it's a man and a woman, and it's an apple, and that's what has brought all these sins? Oh my gosh. So how come there's a sheep eating the grass, and now the sheep is providing us with meat? We are meat eating a meat from a sheep that only eats grass. Hey, wake up in your head. This Bible is a quantitative verbalism. You can learn so much from it, okay? I learned the story of David, very powerful. Right now, as I stand here, I feel like David. But you know, I'm not fighting Goliath. No. no David has already done that. I'm not going to repeat David's stuff. It's like what the minister was saying. No, uh, the guy, a black um, Sharif, repeating Sarkodia's flow. No, 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 no. I'm not doing what David did. Me, my fight is against the whole Western the whole of Asia and Africa and one man and I'm standing and I'm ready to defeat these people so I can claim your value back for you. I can give you back what Kwame Nkrumah started. I will give you back what Malcolm X said. I will give you back that value that no one could give you. I said I will give you back 
because I am ordained, I am anointed, I'm appointed. For those of you that think it's a joke, you are about to see it in reality. This is God's promise. It's not stopping. It seems like a long journey, but no. It only started from yesterday. And the future is here. It started also yesterday, and we are all already late. So please, let's stand up, start walking, start running, till we start flying. We have to have the wings to fly like the eagles and change this world together. We need to restore what black is again. We need to show the world that Africa is rich. We need to show the world that Africa can provide some people who are richer than the Bill Gates. Yes, than the Jay-Z's. Yes, than the people you're seeing over there. The footballers that you are adoring. We have them here. We have some rich people here. We have some great people here. We've had the likes of Hayes Selassie, Kwame Nkrumah. We've had Malcolm X. Some of the greatest, greatest, greatest people of all time from Africa. We have the gold. We have the oil. What else do you want? Know thyself. Know thyself. For he's with you. And I would like to thank you guys very much. I know... <laughs> <laughs> I think someone asked a question. Okay. Last question. Sure. Uh, thank you once again for being here, and thank you for pledging your support for IS for the oncoming years. I just have one question for you. Will you run for president? <laughs> so this is like, this maybe a thousand is not enough. It's like 10,000 times I've heard this in two years. Now, two years back, some people used to say I was a player. Some people said all sorts of things about me. Two years fast forward, some people are saying, do you or do you want to be a president? My dear friend, I don't even know how to become an assemblyman. I don't know anything about politics. I've never chose to learn anything about it because it's not my world. But if my boss says, go ahead and rule a nation, I will become a ruler. I will never let anyone drive me to my own destiny. If God says that save the nation, I will not just put my neck down. I'll put my stomach down. I'll put my life down. I'll put my soul down and I'll save the nation. And I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank All you right. once again, Pastor. All right. No, wait. Um, this, come, come here. Come here. These guys really want to ask a question, but I want to ask them All right. I'll open three more questions. No. I, 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 we can do. A, a I, minute. Wait. Come here. Come here. Before you ask him a question, I want to ask you, what is the third principle of freedom, Jacob Caesar? <laughs> no. Say it. Okay. Uh huh. Third principle. FJC's third third principle. Okay. Okay, it's time. No, the first is know thyself. Number two. The second. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I remember time. If I'm right. I'm... Hello, sir. Please come. Okay, so th this one came out there. Um, I learned there was someone that flew all the way from Italy. Where are you? You flew all the way from Italy. Took away, see? You're the one. Come here. Wow. Please come on, just clap your hands. You flew all the way from Italy to attend IS. It's going to be back. Okay. Because you failed, I want to ask you, what is the last principle of freedom, Jacob Caesar? Wisdom. <laughs> Okay, go ahead and ask, ask a question. Go ahead and sit down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Allow. Oh, oh, let's give him a chance. At least okay. he, got, he got one of them right. So okay, let's give it. him a chance. All right, so go ahead. Yes. Coming here, I was expecting to be perhaps even stay outside because I came late. 
The reason being that this is an educational institution. And I know we have a lot of youth here who would like to be empowered, get to know the experiences of the great leaders and the people we have here. But unfortunately, we have empty spaces in here. You know, one thing I want to say is that, personally, I'm a graduate at the moment, and I seem to have a problem with the educational system in this country. I don't know what he makes of the educational system that we currently have in our country, and if there is something he can say to actually impact those that we have here as students, so they could also take it seriously aside what they learn in classroom. Because I feel there is a lot that has to be done by people in school aside what is being taught in the classroom. Great. Thank you. Great. I, I think it's a great question that the gentleman has asked. Now, education. Many people think education is schooling. <laughs> education. You are being educated by what someone is teaching you or what you're seeing to learn from. It is not necessarily academic. I want the whole Ghana and the whole Africa and all black people get it into your head. You don't need a degree to become successful. You don't need to score 100% all the time to be rich. You need to educate yourself by the things around you. I have given you the best education of your lifetime in one hour. You went to school for 18 years. You haven't acquired that. You are telling me about education when you are learning about books and academics, theory. What happened to your oil? What happened to the gold on the floor? What happened to the sugar that Hunt is following? What happened to all of that? You couldn't educate yourself? Why are you relying on some white man to teach you English so you can educate yourself? Okay, learn from your own. Let your surroundings teach you. Let the greatest people in front of you that had made the mistake teach you. Let the worst people beside you that have become the worst humans make you learn a lesson and stop yourself from being stupid or being in the realm of stupidity. Education is learning from everything. You have to learn from the universe. You have to learn from human beings. You have to learn from the soil. You have to learn from the sun, the day and the night. Imagine if you lost one day you woke up and you didn't see the sunlight. Hey, you're going to think, okay, God has come now. It's over. But then you have never learned anything from these things around you. Somebody else that is teaching you English has learned from the night and the day and has created a solar panel for you. And you are buying it for energy when you already have the energy. Okay? Somebody is coming to educate you about gold. And now you're looking for gold when you're sitting on the gold mine. And then you tell me about education. Please, educate yourself through your natural resources and through your surrounding. Thank you. Last question, please. Last question. First and foremost, I would like to use this opportunity to thank Pastor Brian for organizing, consistently organizing an empowerment summit to I mean, empower with the youth. And to Sir Cheddar, thanks for the nuggets of wisdom shared. Now, with the tremendous impact you've had on humanity, I'd just like to ask you just one question. Are you fulfilled as a person? Thank you. Fulfillment is beyond my imagination. So if you follow the story I've been telling you about myself, you will realize that I went from broke with no hope, no life, starting afresh, wondering who I can be and who I'm going to become. Today, I don't even care who I am anymore. People are putting positions on me. Somebody says, you want to be a president? Somebody says, you want to be my CEO? You want to sit on my board? Of course I am fulfilled. From that place to here, you think I'm not happy that I'm impacting you? You think I'm not happy 
that I have a Lamborghini parked in the garage, I haven't touched it for three months. You think I'm not happy? That I got so much watches, I can't even tell the time anymore. You think I'm not happy? I am so grateful. I appreciate life so much. There is no one here that probably appreciate life the way I'm appreciating life right now. Because I think that I am blessed. God has lifted me higher. Higher beyond society, beyond my imagination. I am happy and I want you to feel like that too. If you get to any position in life where you couldn't get to before, it means that you have moved. Huh? You're not standing anymore. You have moved. Me? I am flying. Right now, it doesn't even feel like it's a footsteps anymore. I feel like I'm so glo close to God. I feel like I'm an angel. I feel like, you know, I feel like I can impact people. You know, I I've got some great, great people. You know, some of my friends, I will call Floyd Mayweather and be like, sit down and let's talk. And he sits. This is a legacy. Someone that wins 50 times. I'll call some great people. I call Jackie up here. She picks her phone. I'm accepted in society. Whether you love me or not, I made it. Somebody say, I made it. Somebody say, I made it. This is it. Please rise up to your feet. Love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Listen. Listen. The new Africa rising. Can you play something? Can you please play something? All right. I'll answer his question. Bring him. So, this is the new Africa. And we, the youth of Africa, we are going to change the game. Amen. It is possible. Prophet, Prophet, I will want you to pray finally. That is Freedom Jacob Caesar's personal prophet. Let's appreciate Prophet here right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before, before Prophet will pray, I'd like to say a few things about Prophet. But there was a gentleman that was here from Italy that, what, what? you know, we, uh, we appreciate the fact that he's come all the way here. Um, I don't know if he's still here. Where is he? But if not, I'm available after and whatever question you want to ask me, you have my time. Okay? Uh, we appreciate you very much. Right. Now, yes. Thank you, sir. Prof. So, wait, before Prof comes. Jackie Apia is in the house. Yay! Yeah. Jackie, come on, come here. Jackie, come here, come here. Listen. This, this word people don't know in 2017 i was i had just landed from london and we had to have this event at the national theater jackie was our first ambassador and jackie said because a company promised to give us money and the, and that company failed jackie was on set jackie called tony one of my guys and sent a cash of 50,000 ghana city Whoa. Whoa! Just to support this movement. Ah, that's so, a big tight, guys. That's a very big tight. <laughs> so we would want to say thank you so much, but you've been consistent over the years. I want you to say something. Wow. <laughs> I'm really humbled and favored to be here today. Um, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you for your words of wisdom. You've inspired me today. You've given me more wisdom, and I'm grateful. Um, he said I've been consistent. Um, wow, it's by the grace of God. Um, it's by being humble. Um, it's by not rushing in life. Now, I don't know how many of you used to watch Things We Do For Love. So, <laughs> so who are my Things We Do For Love fans in the house? Because we go way back, way back. Yes, and this is like 20 years ago, uh, 20, 21 years, like 20 years ago, 2001, yes, um, and I was little, I was a slim girl called Enyonam, and then I evolved throughout the years, 
now everyone sees me, but some people forget that I started 20 years ago. Now the youth of today are so much in a rush to make what someone used 20 years to achieve, they want to use one year to achieve. They want to use six months to achieve. So even when you give birth to a child, a baby, the baby doesn't start walking. It takes time. He crawls. He doesn't even crawl first. He can't even crawl. Then he starts to crawl. Then he starts to walk. Then he begins to say his first words, mama, dada. That is life. Rome was not built in a day. Life is a gradual process. <laughs> <laughs> so to all my young ones there your thick whatever god has planned for you will come at its right time do not rush for it take your time things will come at the right time work towards it i wanted to be an actress i worked hard towards it i didn't even care for being paid or not i wanted to be on tv i love the job if i go on set and they don't shoot with me that day i wouldn't be angry i'll come back the next day happier I loved my work. I enjoyed what I was doing. I didn't care about the money. I just wanted to do what I loved to do, which was act. And God blessed me. So today, stay positive. Even if things are falling apart, I want you to stay positive and believe in your dreams. I love you. We love you. We love you. Bless you. I think someone has... Someone has a presentation for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's just slap our hands. All right, so. Prophet, please tonight, you listen, please don't go home. It's so good to see you, Abna. Thank you so much. Listen, don't go home. Just hang around. There are free food, free buses. Dinah Hamilton is going to be in the house exactly 4 p.m. Dr. Ampia Kofi is going to be here. M O G C C Chum. Please just be around. SB Kofi Sapon. And Trust me. All right. So, okay. So, before um, Prof will pray for us, I would like to personally introduce our Prof to you guys. But I would like to share a little story about our relationship. Um, you see, the greatest people in this world were not born great; they grew great. But before people saw that they were great, it's because they also had some great people around them. When you're looking at Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, they were friends, and they were in different fields. But the greatness prevailed. When I met Prof, where Prof was coming from, he's Indian, Ghanaian. Me, I'm some universal Ghanaian, uh, but we both have our religion, which is the same God we worship, and we do two different things, but we felt a spiritual connection that one have to be prophesying, one have to be sharing knowledge, wisdom, advice, and sharing the words of the Bible. So we got connected, and I want to say that there's so much that I'm about to do, and so much that I'm going to do, that so many words that you shared with me came from that. And I want to use this moment to thank you before you pray for us. Thank you very much. You're All a great right. prophet. Thank you. Please, just a minute. Mr. Augustin, Pastor Augustin, can you please come? Please, Augustin, I think this... This man came all the way from Ni Nigeria. Please, um, Pastor, Pastor Gaston, I learned you had a presentation to make tonight. Okay, thank you. All right, Prophet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us that Moses laid his hands on Joshua, right? And it says Joshua was full of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. Hallelujah. Joshua represented the younger generation. Hallelujah. 
I'll say today through the IS summit, I believe Moses has laid his hands on you. Amen. Hallelujah. Through the several speakers, Pastor Brian, Freedom, Jackie, the minister, and all the many years, many great men and women have come here. What is happening is literally Moses laying his hands on Joshua. Hallelujah. That when Moses was no more, Joshua knew the steps. Hallelujah. So it's my great prayer that this wisdom God has bestowed upon you shall become fruitful, shall become profitable, and shall bring forth your ordained destiny in the name of Christ Jesus. You shall be the giants of the giants. You shall be the giants of the giants. For before you were formed, you were ordained. Let your ordination speak on your behalf. May you encounter the living God. May you experience God. May your sit and your seven senses be activated. Let these words of wisdom be imparted in your soul. That by the time you return next year, you shall become a giant to share a testimony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands. Shout, I will. I can't hear you. Shout, I will. I can. I must. Shout it louder. I will. I can. And I must. God bless you. See you tonight, 4 p.m. All right. <laughs>